So whenever I teach momentum, another very closely related idea to discuss is impulse. And I'm not talking about like an impulse to do something, um, you know, like a reaction out of a person. It's more a change in momentum. Right? An impulse changes momentum. All right. So definition of impulse is literally change in momentum. Most commonly, and how we're going to approach this is that the change in momentum is caused by a change in velocity. Most of the time, an object's mass stays the exact same, and what it does is it speeds up or slows down. And when that happens, if velocity decreases, momentum decreases. If velocity increases, momentum increases. So that will, any change in velocity causes a change in momentum. So, I have this slide put together because I want you to see where the information I'm giving you comes from. However, the rearrangement of these equations, these are, this is not something I would test you on. It's, a, it's just so that you understand why the equations we use to relate an impulse are actually related to each other and why the units work out the way the units do. Okay? So, impulse in its most basic sense comes from a change in impulse. So let's see what that does to the equation that we've already dealt with. So we know P equals MB. Now the letter delta, which is a Greek letter, means change in. So a change in impulse is equal to mass times a change in velocity. All right, so that's why we see those triangles there. That's just an abbreviation for letting us know that in, we are literally changing things. So, an impulse is actually, instead of using delta P, we actually use the letter I, all right, to stand for impulse. So, I is equal to delta P, and then if we plug this in for delta P, this gives us an equation. Impulse is equal to mass times delta V, okay? So, this is our first equation that we, I'm going to introduce you to. Now, something to just remember, we've seen this before. Delta V is VF, or final velocity, minus VO, which stands for initial velocity. All right, so impulse is equal to mass times VF minus VO. Now, the units are still going to be kilograms, because that's the units for mass. And then subtracting velocities doesn't change units, so that's still meters per second. All right. So a change in momentum still has the same units as momentum, okay? Now, because change in momentum involves a change in velocity, that implies that acceleration is occurring, all right? If velocity decreases, we have deceleration. If velocity increases, we have acceleration. And as soon as you involve mass and acceleration, that should make you think of forces, all right? A force is required to cause a change in momentum. Okay, so to see how this equation, F equals MA, can actually bring us to impulse takes a little bit of manipulation, but if you remember your equations from last semester, this shouldn't be too hard to follow along with. So last semester, we knew F equals MA. We also knew that acceleration is equal to your change in velocity, or VF minus VO divided by T. All right, remember that also could be written as delta V above the T, okay? So if we take acceleration and plug it in for the A in our force equation, we'll have F is equal to mass times delta V divided by T. All right? And then just follow me one step further so that I can have you see something that we've already seen on the other side. If we multiply both sides by T, this T will cancel out. And then you're going to have force times time is equal to m delta v. Now, if you look at this, m delta v, we've seen this. That is equal to impulse. So this tells us that impulse is also equal to force times time. All right. Now, the units here actually are the same. But this gives us another way to write them. Because a force is a newton, and then time is seconds. 
So a kilogram times a meter per second is the same thing as a newton second. Okay? So I just am showing you this so that you have some proof behind the equations we're going to use related to impulse and why you may want to interchange newton seconds with kilogram meter per second. Okay? I'm going to make this a little smaller and kind of sum up the major points I wanted you to get out of this. There are three equations that we can work with related to impulse. The first one was impulse is equal to m delta v, or you can always write it this way so that you remember that delta v is vf minus vo. Okay? Second equation we saw on the second half, impulse is equal to force times time. And then the third equation, we actually saw this one already when we were finding equation number two, but because both of these equations are equal to impulse, we can set them equal to each other. So m delta v is equal to force times time. It's also why a kilogram meter per second is equal to a newton second, because the equations are equal to each other. Okay? So, these three equations are the three equations that will come in handy when dealing with impulse problems. And then there might be instances where you want to use one version of the units over another. And I will show you some examples of that in some sample problems. So our first sample problem, we have Tiger Woods hitting a 5.05 kilogram golf ball, giving it a speed of 75 meters per second. What impulse does he give the ball? So first we need to know our knowns. We know mass is 0 0.05 kilograms, and we know A, there's a velocity of 75 meters per second. Since we're dealing with impulse, we need to have a final velocity and initial velocity. So think logically about how golf is played. It, does it, the ball start moving or does the ball start from rest? So the ball is going to start from rest. So our initial velocity is zero meters per second. And then after the ball has been hit, it has that velocity of 75 meters per second. So that's our final velocity. All right. So now that we have our knowns, we have mass, Vf, and Vo. Which equation is actually going to utilize? What would be a better word here? Variables. So what equation has mass and change in velocity in it? Well, that was our first version. All right. You can also think of this as I equals m times vf minus vo. So now that we have our equation, let's solve. So if we plug in I equals 0 0.05 times 75 minus 0, which is also 0 0.05 kilograms times 75 meters per second. All right, that ends up giving you a impulse of 3.75. And then our units, easiest just to use what we see in the problem, is kilograms times meters per second. Okay, you could also write Newton seconds and would not be incorrect at all with your units. All right, but here was L. E, S, S, and U. Okay? So here's a more challenging problem. There's two parts to this. So let's start with part A. So again, let's write out our knowns. We know our mass is 0 0.06 kilograms. So we have a 0 0.6 kilogram tennis ball traveling at 10 meters per second is returned by Venus Williams. So we have a velocity here. It leaves her racket with a speed of 36 meters per second in the opposite direction from which it came. And then question A is what is the change in momentum of the tennis ball? Remember, change in momentum is just another way of saying impulse. So we're solving for I. So let's look at these two velocities. It starts out traveling at 10 meters per second, all right? And then it leaves her racket with a new velocity of 36 meters per second, but in the opposite direction. So we have to factor in that there is a change in direction here. 
So our initial velocity is 10, but we're going to make that a positive 10, or we're just going to leave it as normal 10. But our final velocity is 36 meters per second, but it's in the opposite direction. To account for that, we have to make it a negative number. Okay, so this is like saying it was going 10 meters per second east and then was going 36 meters per second west. To account for that change in direction, you must put a negative sign for the one going in the opposite direction. Okay, so looking at our information, we have mass. We have initial velocity and final velocity. So for part A, our useful equation, so let's see, this was L. Our useful equation is going to be the same one as the last problem. I is equal to m times vf minus vo. So if we substitute in there, I is equal to 0 0.06 kg times negative 36 meters per second minus 10 meters per second which ends up being 0 0.06 kilograms <coughs> times negative 46 meters per second. And then if we solve for that, you end up getting 2.76. And for now, we'll leave the units as kilogram meters per second, because that's what the problem gave us. Okay, but key thing, we need that negative sign. So it's a negative 2.76. If you left the negative sign off, that would imply that it was going in the same direction it started as, and that would be incorrect. All right, the negative sign lets us know that the impulse made it go in the opposite direction. Okay, change the velocity so much that it reached zero and then started going, speeding up in the opposite direction. All right, now for part B, We'll do that one over here. Let's write down what we know for part B. Again, we have the 0 0.06 kilogram ball. And now we also know that we have a time, 0 0.02 seconds. And then what is the average force that Venus hits the ball, all right? So something that's going to help with this equation is what we found from part A. We know our impulse is negative 2.76. However, because we are solving for force, I'm going to write the unit with newtons. All right, if you're ever dealing with force in the equation, it's easier to manipulate the units if they're already written out in units, in newtons. So I'm going to make this newton seconds because newton seconds are equivalent to kilogram meter per second. So the equation that's going to help with this is our other impulse is equal to force times time. All right, and if we are solving for force, force is equal to impulse divided by time, because we have to divide both sides by t to get the f by itself. Okay, so we solve by writing in negative 2.76 newton seconds divided by 0 0.02 seconds, and that gives us negative 138 and then our units because I rewrote these it's really easy to see what's left all right we're taking newtons times seconds and dividing by seconds those s's cancel out leaving us with just newtons which makes sense because we are solving for a force okay so one last sample problem, and this is going to utilize that third equation, 
is with what force must Wayne hit a stationary 0.12 kilogram hockey to make it shoot across the ice with a speed of 20 meters per second or if the stick is in contact with the puck for 0.02 seconds? All right, so what we know, mass, 0.12 kilograms. We know our VF is 20 meters per second. And then where are you going to be able to tell what VO was? Hopefully you noticed the word that it was a stationary hockey puck. All right, so VO is zero. And then we know that time is 0 0.02 seconds. All right, so our equation that's going to help with this is the one that combines everything together. Force times time is equal to mass times VF minus VO. So if we substitute in what we know, we're going to have force times 0 0.02 seconds equals 0 0.12 kilograms times 20 minus 0 meters per second. Or it'll be 0 0.02 times F is equal to 0 0.12 times 20. And I can take that one more step before I think you'll be able to see how to rearrange this on your own. Let's see, point one, this is going to be 2.4. And then to get force by itself, we divide by the 0 0.02. And that gives us 120. Now, we are finding force. Hopefully, you just immediately think, OK, this has to be Newton's. All right, But if you didn't see where that came from, when we take mass and multiply it by velocity, we can write that as kilogram meters per second, or we can write that as newton seconds. And then the 0 0.02 was also seconds. Those cancel out, leaving you with newtons. Right? Make sure you do the online form and have notes ready for in class.